Hello and welcome everyone to another uh, weekly commentary from Stashway. With me again, our Chief Investment Officer, Freddie Lim. Hi there. Um, again, thank you so much for tuning in again today, uh, or if you listen to this over the next few days. Uh, as always, I uh, wanted to give you just a quick reminder for any questions or concerns, please put them below uh, the video so that Freddie and I can address them next week or one of our um, customer engagement executives can reach out to you as well. So that's for the household item. Uh, we have some exciting events coming up over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, one of them on October 2nd, actually, we do in conjunction with Nico Asset Management and uh, Lion Global. It's going to be actually at uh, the Singapore Stock Exchange Auditorium. So if you're interested in that and learn a little bit more about uh, global income portfolios, um, please join us for that. So you can go to the SGX website. You can also find the link on our website at Stashway dot sg slash academy so you can sign up for that through that as well in malaysia on the event we have an event on how to invest with etfs the right way um, that is going to be on the 25th of september that's a wednesday uh, so you can sign up for that again on uh, stashway dot my slash academy or you can find it also on our facebook page and things like that um, so if you have any questions also just put them down below Freddie, uh, a few things to discuss, right, uh, for um, topics that are quite relevant right now. And then we also wanted to uh, go into a debunking a myth that is commonly held in the market, right, or uh, in general in the news. But uh, let's start with a couple of the things that have been going on this since last week. Uh, something that happened last night, actually, in the U.S. Um, there were some things that the Federal Reserve had to step in, uh, called the repo rate, maybe you want to take this a little further and explain to the listeners what that means and does it affect them directly, things like that maybe. Well, uh, the repo rate is just the interest rate for funding overnight or very short term, up to a week in terms of uh, interbank, banks among themselves borrowing money, they post their own assets as collateral and then uh, somebody lends you money and then they reverse the transaction in another day. Right, uh, so that's called repo repurchase agreements. There's some uh, chaos last night in the federal f uh, funds market where repo rate went up as high as 10 percent in a very very uh, knee jerk manner. Um, reasons were cited as in that there were a lot of uh, quarterly payments in terms of taxes that corporates needed to to, to dole out to to the governments quarterly yeah. tax payments and this also had just happened that there's a lot of demand for uh, purchases of uh, US Treasury bonds in the auctions are coming out and just a uh, corporate who holds uh, uh, positions in money market funds needed to unwind some of those positions, get the money and pay for those securities so it's just a bunch of accidental stuff happening at the same time creating a large demand for liquidity for, for, for your money back to buy something else or to pay taxes. So, um, the, and the fact that the, Fed, uh, the Federal Reserve System did not have a regular uh, sub, uh, sort of a liquidity provision program mm -hmm. uh, to supply the other side. There was so, maybe some uncertainty there, right? That's okay. right. So it's a very technical, very short term uh, sort of uh, event. It has nothing to do with outlook for interest rates for the Fed. Yeah. And this can be resolved when the Fed steps in and just actively provide liquidity to the market. And they said they're going to do it again on Wednesday, right? That's so, right. Uh, I think that should <clears throat> calm those. Uh, That's right. So um, do not be afraid of it. It's a very specific event. Um, and it's just something that the U.S. government should learn. Um, as your debt level keep going up and you're issuing a lot of uh, bonds, there's more and more auctions coming in. Yeah and corporate have this tax payment schedules and there's so many things that can come together and things go wrong if you're not ready for it mm -hmm. so uh this is just one post-mortem for the central bank in the u.s but nothing more than that nothing more. Yeah, okay no i think that's a very good summary because it's not the most obvious thing if you read the headlines it's kind of yeah, scary, scary right exactly um another thing that involves the federal reserve they're actually meeting already right now right uh, today and tomorrow in washington yes um discussing is there another rate cut, things like that, right? And what impact kind of that has, does that have? Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to be the census there? Is there going to be a rate cut? Any impacts short term? Well, if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, um, according to a lot of people, the, the world is ending. 
And so there were more aggressive rate cut expectations in the markets. Yeah. That's been thankfully removed because in the sense that our base case is that the Fed would cut one more time as a base case. But previously, a couple of weeks ago, markets were pricing in very aggressive two rate cuts within a year. There's only a few more months to go and the economic numbers were doing fine in the US. Um, the trade war just got diffused and uh, Brexit may not happen. Yes. Right? So that's just, um, when you look at a lot of flip flops and these events and in a lot of these statements made by people, you should really take it with a grain of salt and not go too aggressive, not go too overreactive as well. So this is one example where the market actually realized, realized its pricing was probably too aggressive and now it took back some of those expectations. So right now the market is expecting fully one rate card and a small chance, a 35% chance for a second which leaves us less event risk or less systemic risk towards the end of the year because when you are pricing more and if you get dis disappointed, Correct. the market can have a more violent reaction. So this is a very good adjustment in the market that's taking place yeah. and very good for investors like ourselves. Yeah, no, thanks Freddie. I think uh, that sums up quite nicely therefore on the Federal Reserve uh, headlines for this week that you'll be hearing and seeing uh, over the next couple of days with a lot of um, yes. just opinions apart from people, right? Um, last but not least, um, Saudi Arabia, um, mm. the attack on the drone, uh, on the drone attacks on the oil fields and mm. the disruption of what roughly 40% of uh, oil refining production um, the well, last few uh, days, right? Yes, uh, there was some allegation yes. that the Iranian, Iranian operated drones uh, destroyed a big part of the facilities for processing oil and that uh, a lot of uh, the output will be disrupted for a while and uh, as you knew the media pounced on it and there was a lot of hype a lot of fear mongling as well that it's going to take Saudi forever to replace those lost capacities and and today news flow went the other way we've seen uh, that the Saudi was they were managed to restore 41% of the lost, uh, lost capacities within the last few days, yeah. right? So there's going to be a lot of restoration coming in. So oil prices starting to stabilize. Uh, so let's the uh, US not, also stepped in. US has stepped in yeah. with, with exports, but yes, touching the tapping into there. the herbs. So I figure that this is again, yet another uh, very short term events that we should not respond to. No worries about any retaliation, any kind of immediate mm maybe war breaking out in the Middle East. It's always well, like a hotbed anyways, right? Well, uh, it seems to me that the conflicts has always been there between a lot of countries in the, the Middle East yeah. and Saudi Arabia being very close to the Middle East region. Are they technically inside it? They're yeah, inside yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah, in a way, um, the tension is always there. Um, but um, let's not get carried away. A couple of months ago, we also have Iranian allegations as well, right? They attack U.S. Uh, ships, and yeah. so that's not going to go away. Um, as long as you have a diversified uh, yeah. portfolio that goes across many types of asset classes, you shouldn't really uh, worry about it too much. Very isolated uh, yes. instances. Um, yeah, with that, I think we wrap up on the on the on the <coughs> news. Um, one thing that we always get, right? Uh, almost at every event, uh, we get the question. Mm -hmm. I know you're doing an event tonight, um, so we will probably get the question again as well. Right. And it's every once in a while in the news, we like there was a couple of articles again the last few weeks as well. Passive investments such as ETFs, right? Mm -hmm. Can they can they pose any like kind of systematic risk to the markets, right? We get this all the time, and then I want to just ask you and maybe clear this up a little bit for the investor of you know. Does, is that actually a risk or not, or why well, not, if so? Well, ETF is an instrument for uh, investors to get access to markets, and it's one of many instruments. Um, I think the user behind the instrument ultimately decide what sort of risk is being accumulated. Mm -hmm. That's number one. If you are a speculative uh, uh, trader and you, you can short in ETFs, you can long in ETFs, you can use futures, you can use derivatives. So again, it's dis dictated by the yeah. user. But more importantly, we're blaming the small guy here because ETF uh, has only 8.7% market share for global assets under management as of December 2018. Even by now, the numbers don't change that much. 
And if you add in other indexed, uh, more passive mutual funds into the mix, the total passive community is about 19% of global assets under management. Now, look, let's look at the active management community. Mm -hmm. um, active core portfolio guys, you add in the specialists and you add in the alternatives, which include VCs and hedge funds, that total number goes up to 67% of global assets under management. Yeah. So we are now looking at a small guy and, and uh, we are fear-mongering on this portion of the big picture. So, and it's just an instrument, isn't it? So I would just, uh, and also the other distinguishing points about passive investing is that most of the people in this side, they are not leveraged. I'm investing my savings, a dollar is a dollar. Whereas in the hedge fund community, it's quite common that yeah. uh, we can leverage or borrow multiple times of our assets under management we can uh, uh, to, to magnify our impact, mm -hmm. right? So that, for the passive community, did not happen. We are smaller, we don't leverage. And two, although there's a lot of funky ETFs out there, but majority of ETFs are more tracking purposes at the moment, yeah. right? So the, sh uh, the shorting of security probably happens a large number of times elsewhere. Yes, right? exactly. So in a way, again, I, I, I don't know why this topic keep, keep coming out. I, I just felt yeah. that we are blaming a small guy who is not shorting uh, a lot, who is not borrowing money to magnify the impact. So uh, what is this about, really? Yes, yes. and then there, there was one other question. Uh, so thanks for that. that. I think that wraps this up. And if you have any other questions around that, please put them down below or answer, ask us at any of our events. Happy to discuss this. Uh, one other thing before that I almost forgot is we did get a question from last week from a client in uh, or user or listener. In uh, in Malaysia, asking if, if there is any like future product development that would also see a uh, income product that we just launched in Singapore last week for Malaysia. Mm. Is that something that you might be thinking of? Is maybe we can't talk about it yet, but anything you can give to this user or listener? Well, it is our core belief that um, regardless of where you are and your age group, as you progress through your life cycle, you will have a certain need. Uh, in terms of growth mm. and also you have a certain need in terms of having high quality income so yes we are constantly looking at ways to introduce income generating uh, uh, sort of a products in in any countries but we also am uh, we are truly looking at a global product as well yeah. that's income driven so uh, just stay tuned uh, because uh, those are ongoing and we're not going to stop here there's a lot more to do uh, at Stash Away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Freddie, uh, for another week. Uh, we will be all back with you next week. Um, so have a wonderful uh, rest of your week and uh, a good day today. Bye-bye. Ciao.